everybody. Welcome back to Foundations of Community. Um, you have so far completed your examination of Old Testament Hebrew communities and hopefully you have seen some patterns emerge. Hopefully you have seen some new things, some new topics as you did your reading and learned a little bit about what that community looked like and looks like today. We're going to start in with our Hellerman book. We're going to start reading this one. Hopefully you have it by now either on Kindle or uh, paperback. If you ordered it on paperback from Amazon and it's not here yet, you can go ahead and download a free sample of the first couple chapters. That should get you through this week. So the first half of the week, we are going to be looking at the introduction of the book. And it's not like most introductions. Most introductions are just short, sweet, and you can kind of skip them. But in this book, the introduction really sets up the tone of what we're going to be studying. And your questions reflect that. Um, so by the time you're watching this, you should have already read the introduction. If you haven't, pause this, go ahead, go back and read the introduction, and then come back. Um, we're going to talk about spiritual formation and spiritual formation is maturity in um, in your spiritual life it is growing past the point of the initial salvation into past the justification into the sanctification process this is the process that matures you over time this is the process where you become more and more Christ-like over time um, so that's what spiritual formation means and it occurs primarily in the context of community uh, especially today, you hear a lot of people speak that um, they don't need a church community, they don't need a community that they can stay home and watch it online, um, that they can study on their own, they don't need Bible studies, they don't need anybody. And um, with the culture we have today, that seems like a viable option. Um, there are plenty of resources available to anybody who wishes, um, and it seems more and more like you can get away with being an island. You know that phrase, no man is an island. It seems more and more like people are trying and succeeding to isolate themselves from the rest of the world. And you can, you have that choice. The problem is you won't grow in the way that you think you're going to grow. The spiritual formation, the, the foundation of this book is that spiritual growth really is not gonna happen outside of community. And then he's going to go into details as to why he thinks that is. Uh, that you, within a community, you grow in self-understanding and in the ability to relate to one another. And that just does not happen outside of a church community or a community setting. Um, the biblical reality is that we grow together or we don't grow at all. And I think I've, I've seen that more often than not today you see those who isolate themselves and are stunted and are spiritually stunted and are are searching and and trying to fill this hole in their life and they don't realize that they've isolated themselves and that's really what's causing that that emptiness so look at Rebecca's story and this is one of your assigned questions I want you to look at Rebecca's story and think about Rebecca for a little bit do you relate to anything in her story? Um, what do you think got in her way? Have you seen that happen or something similar happen in your own lifetime to those around you or to yourself? And what do you think that would have looked like? Would that have been an issue in the Jewish communities that we studied, that we studied last week? Um, let's talk about American individualism versus the collectivism of other, of other countries, um, other cultures around the world. America stands out as starkly individualistic compared to other cultures and he makes clear not to make a judgment call as to what whether one is better or worse than another um, just pointing out that um, from a sociological standpoint our culture is very different um, we are brought up to believe that we can do anything be anything we want that we can put our needs and wants first before anybody else's. Um, there's some sense of, of family community, but even that you see drifting away. Um, families don't stick together anymore. Kids go away to college. 
move across the country, don't come back. Um, things are just different from the way that they're structured elsewhere in the world. And there's a reason for that. There's, there's economic reasons for that, there's sociological reasons for that, and there's religious reasons for that. Um, he gives an example of two Christian university students discussing marriage, and I think that's a very stark example of the difference between our culture and others. The one student is absolutely appalled at the idea of an arranged marriage, and the other student is looking at the other one going, how can you marry someone without considering how it's going to affect your family? And it shows this huge difference in just the perspectives of how we see the world, um, our paradigm. So we're going to talk about first century Christianity in this book, and we're going to look at what that looked like. Does that look more like the Jewish communities of old, or does that look more like our community here today in America or something in between? Um, we're going to learn that family was the central social metaphor. Family held the community together. Family held the social structure together. Family was the center. Um, and that is important to know because as you read the scripture, there are references made using familial terms that don't mean to us today what it meant to the readers of the past. And so things can get lost in translation. And finally, he emphasizes that God is not a feel-good path to an individual's personal enlightenment, which we see a lot of that today, a lot of search for my journey, my spiritual journey, to the exclusion of those around me. Um, and what he's saying and his thesis for this book and his thesis for a lot of his writing is that that's not the way it works, that God is not something for you to be on a road toward where he's just guiding you toward your own enlightenment that you're a part of something bigger than just yourself okay so that's your introduction um, spend some time chewing on it this is not the kind of reading that you can just fly through answer the questions and move on I mean I guess you could but for you to get the most out of this chew on it stop read a section and think about it for a minute how would you feel in that situation have you known someone in that situation have you seen something happen that is similar and reflect on that in your reading log um, you'll keep these reading logs and I hope you continue to use these reading logs as you read more in the future because you it's really cool to go back and look and and see how things have affected you over time all right so that should cover us for the introduction. I'll do another short little video for chapter one, and this is where we start our PowerPoint presentations for chapter one. So make sure that you do the introduction, do your reading log, do your assignments, get them turned in online, and then do read chapter one, and then join me back here for the chapter one video. I'll see you soon. Thanks.